Today we're drawing a phoenix bird using dip ends and Indian ink. I'll share the preparation process which includes concept thumbnails and an initial sketch. I'll demonstrate a transfer technique giving you the option to either create your own drawing or to use the provided template that you can ink along with me step by step. Here are the materials we'll be using. In the resource section of the description below, you'll find a complimentary workbook download along with a list of the materials used in this video. You can of course substitute with whatever you have on hand. We'll begin the planning by learning a bit about our subject. Seeing that it's a mythological creature, this gives us ample freedom to compose our phoenix with a probable mix of references combined with imagination. Once we're satisfied with a concept, we can explore composition by sketching a few thumbnails. From there, using an H graphite pencil on sketch paper, we'll start with basic shapes to construct the main outlines of the phoenix. After cleaning up the excess graphite with a rolled up kneaded eraser, we'll proceed to the next stage of refining the contour outlines with a sharpened pencil. As mentioned in the introduction, from here are two options. Option A, you can pencil your own phoenix, take a screenshot of this one, or use the complimentary PDF as reference. Or option B, you can skip penciling a drawing altogether. Simply print out the blue line template from the workbook on regular printer paper. We'll begin by applying soft graphite to the back of either your drawing or the back of the template. Use a non-stick tape to secure the template onto the inking surface and with a regular ballpoint pen, we can begin tracing over the contour lines with an even amount of pressure so that the soft graphite underneath transfers to the bristle paper. Think of these contour lines as a map. This map is our guideline to help make the best decisions at the inking stage. Some of the lines are simply there to indicate boundaries and will not necessarily be defined with ink at all. If you're finding that there is too much information in this tail portion of the template, find the main artery lines will clean up any ambiguous areas at the inking stage. Once all the contours have been traced, we can remove the paper revealing our transferred image. We'll once again use the kneaded eraser to remove excess graphite and we're ready for the ink application. Using a small nib, we'll start with the eye and move outwards from there. Here, I've given the pupil a snake-like shape and filled it in, leaving a speckle of white reflection. We'll give it an outline around the outer edge of the eye and since this is a fantasy creature, we're not following a photo reference, instead included the final artwork to help orient our navigation of the contour map. I'll now move down to the beak using broken lines in the areas of light and continue to establish the outer shape of the bill. Going ahead now rendering the texture of the beak with short hatches along the form, changing the orientation of the line direction, and now breaking up the reflection with contour dashes. I've switched momentarily to the larger nib to fill in darker tone at the tip of the beak, then pulling thick lines from dark to light and slightly thickening the contours around the bill. You'll notice that I rotate the paper to suit the angle I'm most comfortable with for mark making. I prefer to pull the lines towards me for the majority of the strokes. Then back to the small nib to complete the texture on the maxilla. Then adding a gnar or nostril and the seri line, that bump on the upper part of the bill, to give it the appearance of a bird of prey. Finishing with a few more cross contour dashes to make the illusion of form more convincing. Now we switch to the bigger nib for the next few sections of the inking process. We'll start with lines following the feather shapes on the head of the phoenix using flowy parallel curve hatches. Then we'll address the crest that resembles the plumage of a peacock, adding a curved supercilium, basically a fancy eyebrow, above the eye ring and continue to layer feathers for an overlapping effect on the nape and around those protruding funky feathers. Now we add the eye patch and pull directional strokes beneath to unify with the shapes that form the chin and throat. We'll work our way down the throat You'll notice that I'm using our map as approximate boundaries for the individual feathers and 
Within those boundaries, putting particular emphasis on line direction, pulling strokes along the length of the form to accentuate the volume. In relation to the light source, I'm using dashes and dots in those areas of lighter value, plus leaving blank where there are stronger highlights. I'm continuing the pattern on the wing shoulder, then the breast, pulling strokes in the direction that the feathers are growing. I angle the marks to show plane changes and vary the length of the marks for the smaller overlapping feathers that are arranged in clusters on the breast. To indicate finer feathers and to give it the illusion of roundness, leaving more open spaces to show highlights. We'll give the belly a more subtle texture. Here I'm also adding pressure on the nib to release more ink creating those short curve hatches so they look raised and catching a touch of cast shadow just giving enough information so that it reads as a texture. Moving from the flank to the thigh, there are a few plane changes with overlapping feathers that flow downwards with a hair-like quality. The lines build to a point and taper at the end. The strokes continue to flow over the form following our graphite map. I bring the marks closer together to develop the tone, then spread the lines gradually apart to let more light in. Here I'm increasing the pressure on the nib to thicken those lines. I'm also bringing the lines closer together, re reducing the space between them to achieve a mid-range in value. Staying alert not to apply too much pressure on the nib. And now, moving over to the leg that is in the forefront. Changing the pattern again, building tone for added volume, and modifying pressure on the nib to release more ink and give emphasis to the tarsus scales. Outlining the toes and talons, giving a cross-contour hatch treatment to this area. You'll notice that we didn't outline the whole bird as a first step. We'll later revisit to make adjustments as more of the subject is developed so that no single area is overworked or overpowering. Moving over to the primaries, I'm using very loose dynamic sweeping strokes to define the outline of this wing feather. On the upper wing bar is a claw-like feather and we're keeping the feathers looking organic, letting the lines rest against each other to create the shapes without hard edges. And shorter marks for the row of tiny fe feathers giving ample reflective light. We'll outline the claw and cross contour curve hatches. Now we'll define the rachis or shaft of the second primary, keeping the nib pressure even. Hatching some textures on the primary with directional strokes angled to taper. Here you can get really creative with how you express this entire wing section. You've likely noticed that the three principles I've been using for this ink application are line direction, I'm either following the form or crossing the form to accentuate volume and plane changes in the shapes. Using a value structure for lighter values of the scale, I use sparse marks or a more open space between the lines. And for darker tones, like for this upper wing bar here, we bring the marks closer together from white to black. And thirdly, repetition of pattern to unify areas of similar value for the wing bars, we're using a similar mid-tone so that it blends uniformly, yet delineating the feathers with the line direction changes. And for the long primary feathers of the wing, the parallel barbs of each feather remain within the same tone with just enough contrast to differentiate them individually. And we'll continue with this process along this section of the wing.
here on the secondaries, the lower part of the wing has darker tones from the overlapping feathers above. Now that the wing is complete, I'm revisiting areas of stronger highlights and enhancing those lines that are butting against areas of stronger shadows and dabbing darks to blend shadows against the mid-tones. We'll address the other wing using the smaller nib because it is farther from the viewer. We'll give this section a faint broken outline and a light tone using short marks slanted at the same angle to suggest movement. Switching back to the large nib, we'll tackle the tail. To replicate the peacock train, the tail consists of highly elongated upper tail coverts. These feathers have no particular markings, but will stack the lines to mimic the slats of a closed fan going from narrow to wide, from the rachis towards the quill into the rump of the phoenix. For the tail coverts, with a long flowing line like this, it's fine to do it in sections. Return to the line and overlap it using light pressure and continue along the path. It's okay to deviate from the template here as long as the spacing seems convincing. Again, using directional strokes for the texture of the individual barbs, pulling the lines from the shaft towards the end of the feather. I'm using squiggly irregular lines for the tail and feathers, keeping with the fantasy theme appearance, have, having fun with it. Moving over to the back leg, we'll apply our darkest tone here with tight cross contour lines using a slight gradation towards the reflected light at the edges. Once the ink has dried completely, we can use the kneaded eraser to remove any remaining graphite marks. Now that we've done our initial pass of the entire subject, we can assess the relationships of values and address the areas in our drawing that need more contrast or smoothing with mid-tones. I'm skipping around the drawing and layering tone for the finishing touches, adding appropriate thickness to the areas that benefit from more weight for stronger contrast or line variety for visual interest. For the back talon, We'll again build the darks without going over to the very edge of the leg as there's a faint reflected light and cast shadow that does a lot to add to the illusion of form. We kept our lines simple on the first pass and now seeing how those tiny incremental marks produce results, it reminds me to trust the process. And now our pin and ink drawing of a phoenix is complete. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you were able to draw along with me. If you'd like to see the process for adding a background to this phoenix piece, be sure to visit me on Instagram or Pinterest. I wish you the best with your pen and ink projects and appreciate your support for my channel. Thanks again for subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.